Hello, thank you, Lucille, for your keynote. And we are back here with the next 50 Founders Battle track, which is super exciting because it's artificial intelligence and machine learning track. And I will welcome the jury to the stage now. And uh, we'll ask to please introduce yourselves shortly and the fund. Uh, first in our jury is Eba Lillehook, investment manager at Tele Ventures. Yes, so hi, great to be here. I'm um, Ebba, investment manager at Televentures, the CVC of Tele Company, being the largest telco in Scandinavia and the Baltics. We invest in enterprise software, Series A, Series B, normally a ticket around one to five million euro, and uh, we have a global mandate. So far, a portfolio around 10 to 15 companies. Um, and uh, for us, AI and machine learning appeals, partly because it's dependent on data and connectivity being the core of Telia's DNA, partly because it spans over many different verticals in which we are excited and want to invest in. So um, very much looking forward to this uh, discussion, this session. Thank you. And the second member in the jury is Oliver Molander, Venture Partner at J12 Ventures. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. So my name is Oliver. I'm a Venture Partner at J12 Ventures, an advisor, and I focus on AI and data infrastructure startups. I'm trying to find the next snowflake in Databricks in the Nordics. And J12 is an early stage VC fund. We invest pre predominantly in pre-seed and seed stage tech startups in the Nordics and Baltics. And our most, uh, our key focus is to find strong founding teams and we invest quite horizontally uh, within technology. Thank you and welcome, Oliver. And uh, the third jury member is Yuso Koskinen, invent investor at By Founders. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. Great to, great to be here. Um, as, as Anna said, I, I'm Yuso, I'm part of the By Founders investment team. I lead our investments in the Finland and the Baltics. I'm Finnish originally, but based now in Copenhagen. And um, yeah, our, our fund is, is uh, mostly focusing in, in the Nordic and Baltic companies uh, at early stages, giving, going everything, going everywhere from uh, pre-seed to seed stage. And uh, yeah, we're backed by some of the most accomplished founders and, and operators from the region. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Yuso, and welcome. And the uh, fourth member in this jury today is Michael Rembel, Startup Manager at Microsoft. Hi, from my side, everyone. Uh, also very thankful and grateful for being here. Uh, like, like said, my name is Michael. I'm uh, from Microsoft, the Startup Manager here, more, mostly focused on uh, Baltic markets, but uh, largely uh, the whole Europe. And it is no secret that we are looking for uh, cool AI uh, and machine learning startups uh, to invest in in several ways. And uh, this is why I am here and uh, looking forward for all the pitches. Thank you, Mikhail. And last but not least, the fifth member of this jury is Alexander Schmidt, investor at Cherry Ventures. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm Alex. I'm part of the investment team at Cherry Ventures. We're a pan-European fund with 175 million in our fund, third fund. We invest industry agnostically, but me, myself, I haven't been a prior founder in NLP. I focus a lot on developer-facing software solutions. I'm super excited to be here. Currently trying to reschedule my calendar so I can be here for the whole session, but let's see if that hopefully works. Let's hope so. All right, uh, let's start. The first startup is Ecosite. Hello, I am presenting Ecosite, a software of automated analysis of horse X-ray images. Horses, magnificent, beautiful, but remarkably fragile. Loads of money invested in buying and training a racing horse can quickly be lost if even the smallest of bone fracture goes unnoticed. 
There are more than 10 million of high-value horses around the world. Their price decreases dramatically if they get injured. Radiology is often the first imaging modality to assess lameness. There are not enough veterinary imaging specialists to acquire a constantly growing number of X-ray images. I'm Rugi. I'm a founder of a company, Veterinary Innovations. We are creating the solution, automatic analyzation of equine x-ray images. The diagnosis is automated based on thousands of past labeled images made by professional veterinarians. Equestrian market is huge, allocating 133 billion in Europe alone. Our initial target market is France due to current partnerships. Our business model is to collaborate with image processing systems that are used by every clinic. We will integrate as a plugin. When a patient comes into the clinic, the front end process is the same, and in the background, we automate diagnosis generation through the POX system. I'm a veterinarian myself, and I'm pleased to work with expert developers. More than two years have passed since the start, and at this point, there are nine team members. We have prominent advisors and mentors, mentors from a variety of players in the market. Our current team structure has enough skills to develop the product further. Our senior and AI specialist is a research professor in Vilnius University. We are also advised by doctors and horse owners who are very excited to help develop this new solution. This is how our prototype works. Doctors simply select a picture for analysis and Ecosite automatically detects lesions. We have reached out to thousand vet clinics and leading doctors are currently testing it. So far, we have attracted over 52,000 euros in grants. We have also built a massive database of previous extras and diagnoses with some of the largest horse clinics in France, Denmark, Portugal and Lithuania. The awaited integrations are into United States Image Viewer Creators Vettel Diagnostic and VEST systems that is used by the main equine joint venture in France. We will be fundraising in six months to develop the product further. Please follow us on any social media channel and take a part in veterinary industry innovations. Thank you. I'm inviting Rogeta Daulite. Uh, Dalyotite, uh, founder of Ecosite, to the stage. Hello, Hello Rogila. Good to have you. Good to have you as well. Um, questions from the jury, please. Uh, yes, please. So, uh, thank you for your pitch. I have the first question. So, you say that you are scaling, working very close to partners. Can you please explain your scaling strategy a bit more? Are you very dependent on your partners or do you need to have local presence or kind of please explain yeah thank you for the question so uh, currently we are testing the prototype with with loads of clinics and um, as for further uh, scaling up uh, our business model is to integrate into the systems that are already used by the veterinary doctors uh, so we will integrate into this image viewers um, for further usage of our program. Another question from uh, the jury? Yes. Hi, I'm Oliver. Great presentation. So uh, as we know, machine learning deep learning models are highly dependent on the data. And uh, it's really the data, which is the secret sauce here. Uh, so how have you created your data set and is the data somehow unique for you or is it publicly available? What's the background behind the data that you use to train the model? Okay. Thank you, Oliver, for the question. Uh, all the data were, uh, were taken from the leading clinics in Europe. Uh, so I was the one that actually go there and, and uh, asked for it. So it's unique, it's not open source, uh, and all the images are labeled by our internal system by, by veterinarians. Okay, one Great. more small question maybe from Mikkel, if uh, we have a couple of seconds left. Yeah, I, was just one, I was just wondering, uh, what's the worst that can happen when uh, the projection or the result is wrong? Uh, and what's the risk there? Yeah, super question. Um, we are going to the market as a second opinion providers. 
So uh, all the uh, uh, yeah. So uh, the doctors uh, take the responsibility by themselves, just trusting us as a as an accurate second opinion provider. Thank you, thank you, Regila. And uh, we have to move to the next startup. Uh, it's Cupic. My name is Zoran, one of the co-founders and CEO of Cupic. We are helping physical shops and physical stores become competitive as e-commerce. Even though e-commerce is striving a lot, still the king of commerce is the physical stores. That's because they represent the shopping experience. And they're the backbone of every economy. But before going forward, this is the problem. The advertising and customer engagement for physical stores doesn't work that way. They cannot engage customers effectively through Facebook and Google because they cannot engage them at the right time and place. Most of the time they find that printed flyers and plastic loyalty cards does that the best. And this is ridiculous because everybody has a smartphone right now. We've developed a channel that allows customers and shops to reach each other based on their interest and location. With this, shoppers can quickly create shopping lists, navigate through complex um, um, premises, physical premises like shopping malls, and always be in touch with their favorite local stores. Customers love us because we save their privacy and uh, help them avoid spamming. And this makes local shopping more fun. And now more than ever, shoppers are looking to spare their, spend their money locally. And that's because of COVID. For shops, we help them drive more footfall. We help them improve their customer experience and do more sales. We are a subscription-based business model. We, we allow shoppers to come on board for free and grow as they go. But for shopping malls, we provide a lot more tools, allowing them to analyze customers, to analyze um, shopping experience and uh, bring more value to their tenants. There are over 2 million shops around Europe. There are over 10,500 shopping malls and over 6,000 um, retail chains that are looking to improve their customer engagement, especially after COVID. The team behind this has been working on this uh, project for over two years now, and we've been working on uh, projects before that for over five years, and we are first-hand familiar with the problem. Um, this is what we've achieved so far. Right now, we are onboarding one of the biggest shopping malls in Europe, BTC, and in three months from now, we're going to be onboarding one of the biggest shopping malls in Abu Dhabi. So, if this is your interest, if you're looking into joining uh, Cupic uh, become our partner. We will be raising our next round in um, eight to ten months from now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And looking forward from to hearing from you. Thank you. I'm inviting Zoran Nosteski, CEO of Cupic, to the stage. Right here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Jury, your questions, please. Okay, maybe I can go first. Hi, Zoran, thanks for the presentation. Very good energy. Um, to to start off, like my, my first question is like, I really did not necessarily understand like the, the competitive edge. I think there's, um, you know, as almost soon as many loyalty card apps as there are lo loyalty cards to be frank. Um, so where where is that like, apart from like the network effects, which may be obvious here, what, what, what do you think? Like, where are you betting on? Um, we we know that there are a lot of apps that do small types of uh, favor to local shoppers, but we specifically developed this tool as a tool for shopping malls and stores. Um, our competitive edge is that um, we give uh, consumers a lot more tools and a lot more advantage towards protecting their data. Um, it's a full stack of tools and uh, that works both ways for shoppers and shopping malls. Okay, great. Thank you. Another question. Can I have the second question. Um, how how do you go plan you go to market? Like, how do you approach these shopping malls? How do you set up the first POCs with them? Two ways. Uh, it's either we uh, make a deal with a shopping mall in a city, and then we acquire the rest of the city, or we go and acquire small shops and then uh, go for the shopping malls. Meaning, we have a freemium model with the small stores. 
we onboard them for free, create the content, and then uh, advertise on Facebook to bring on the audience, and then um, uh, go for the shopping mall. If we do it the other way around, uh, like we're doing with Abu Dhabi, the shopping mall wants to start from their stores and then spread to the city um, and uh, engage, uh, acquire the customers, uh, acquire the shoppers, local shoppers in their city. We have to move to the next startup. Uh, it's Legit. Um, since this uh, video doesn't seem to be working at the moment, we'll go to the next startup, which is Get Focused. Hello, I'm Austin Nicholas, the founder and CEO of Get Focused, a meeting software company that empowers you to conduct highly effective and engaging remote meetings. In the new normal, up to 80% of managers' time is spent in remote meetings. We're on a mission to destroy pointless and unproductive remote meetings. To free up more time to spend on things that really do matter, whether it be focused on work, time with family and friends, or simply staying physically and mentally well. A Formula One car is loaded with over 200 sensors providing teams big data analytics to overtake their rivals both on and off the track. Why are companies not implementing any systems to optimise time and drive team meeting performance? despite so much of the working week being spent on Zoom. Get Focused would like to introduce you to Keris, your always learning virtual meeting facilitator that integrates with all your major video conferencing platforms and project management tools. Keris feeds Get Focused with trends and data that when interpreted provides teams with insights and analytics to ensure every meeting matters and that everyone is on the same page. Keris enables you to rate, review and recognise meeting performance and engagement levels. Our typical clients are high growth tech and fintech companies wanting to get ahead. And we've already received some great feedback from companies piloting our tool. Our pricing model is simple. Get Focus will allow one team in a tribe to use the tool for free and then price at five euros per person per month for every additional person. Our onboarding funnel includes a free book, online training before integrating Keris. The goal, a 20% boost in meeting performance within three months. Our key differentiators are its actionable insights and ongoing machine learning capabilities to develop highly focused meeting habits. It is the world's first virtual meeting facilitator. The remarkable Get Focused leadership team have worked with each other for over 14 years, bootstrapping travel out there from an experienced agency with an average paycheck of around 35 euros per person into a corporate event franchise with budgets up to 350 grand for the likes of Google, TDK and Shell. We do not want to spend so much time scaling Get Focused, hence we're seeking a 350,000 euro pre-seed investment to fuel rapid growth. Our first milestone is to secure 150 clients driving revenue in the region of 750,000 euros. One last thing. As the late great Steve Jobs stated, it's really clear that the most precious resource we all have is time. Why not embrace and adapt to these amazing times we're living in and potentially save a day a week by investing in your meeting culture? Let's get focused and meet with purpose. Thank you. I'm inviting Austin Nicholas, CEO of Get Focus, to the stage. Hello. Hi, hello. Jury, please, your, your questions are welcome. Yeah, so I may have the first 
question. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, sounds great with a tool that um, improves collaboration. So my first question is, can you give an example more in kind of how a, a, an AI component uh, can be used, applied to the functions sure. and improve collaboration? Great question. Um, well, it's very simple elements in terms of capturing data. So I know one thing that we can do is, is give a level of engagement and um, dependent on the type of meeting. So in our initial process, we intend to just do that by recording microphone usage from the various users so we can gauge how engaged that, that, that um, meeting is. But then to sort of encourage more psychological safety in the team, we're wanting to give uh, an indicator of the empathy level in the, in, the, in the meeting itself as well. And that's where we go a little bit deeper. Uh, we've yet to Im implement the empathy level because I think it's a little bit in terms of timing. It might freak a few people out. Um, but I think with usage, we hope that then people would want to, to get that. Um, then there's other data points where it's punctuality. Um, so we can track punctuality. And, and um, then in terms of insights recorded, which insights at what time of the day most insights are recorded. So then we can say actually recommend this time for your team is, best, is, is when everyone seems to be uh, at an optimal state to meet. So there's loads, there's loads, but it's always selecting which ones at, at, at first. Does that answer your question? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Austin. Thank you so much. And uh, we will be moving to the next startup, which is Envision. Hi TechShield, I am Eddie, co-founder and CEO of Envision, where we build the productivity platform for teams to work 10 times faster with video. Over the last few years, we've seen a massive acceleration in the adoption of video by businesses, and with a quarter of companies now adopting remote and hybrid work models, video is becoming as important as text in the business world. With more videos being recorded, there is a huge opportunity for teams to better share knowledge and work more collaboratively around this medium. But after speaking with many companies across a broad range of industries, we've realized that working with video today is still as hard and slow as it was 10 years ago. On the one hand, video editing tools remain complex and daunting. They require a steep learning curve, which means that only a few people within those companies can edit videos. On the other hand, you have the age-old problem of being able to find specific content based on a quote or someone appearing on screen. In those cases, either you or your colleagues would need to have prior knowledge of the location of the video file of interest. And on top of this, you need to know when in the video that section of interest occurs. At the end of the day, companies waste a lot of time and money on these operations. This is why we are building Envision, the AI-powered video productivity platform for teams to work better, faster, and together around video. Our platform leverages speech-to-text and computer vision to automatically understand and index any spoken word, person, or text on screen, making videos instantly searchable. This enables teams to save hours because now they can find their video content in seconds. This also allows anyone within the team to edit videos and to do so 10 times quicker than traditional tools. Finally, a cloud-based platform enables teams to efficiently organize and share knowledge in their videos. There are currently 1.5 million mid-sized businesses in Europe and in the US that frequently use video. And where we start is with the 420,000 businesses in the UK and in the US whose teams require a solution to quickly find and repurpose content for, uh, from webinars. This is a direct opportunity of 1.65 billion pounds. We are currently live and running a private beta with 18 customers. We will be launching publicly next month. And by the end of the third quarter of this year, we aim to generate over 40,000 pounds in annual recurring revenue. We are the right team to build this. After his PhD in imaging and visualization, spent, Stathi spent a couple of years working as a product manager for various B2B companies. And I have a background in software engineering and AI, having led teams and built successful products using cutting edge technology across various industries. That is why we are raising 750,000 pounds to further build the AI and analytics features that deliver more value to our customers, to scale our customer acquisition strategy, and to acquire over 200 customers in the next 12 months in order to generate over 500,000 pounds in annual recurring revenue. If you want to learn more about Envision, feel free to contact me on eddy at envision.io. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm inviting Eddie Forsman, co-founder of Envision, to the stage. Hello, Eddie. Hi there. Hey. Hi. Good to meet you all. Jury, your questions, please. Who wants to be first? Oh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, Eddie, thanks for the pitch. Quick side note, take it down like a lot. <laughs> it was really fast. Don't, um, because of it, it was so fast. I need to ask this question. So, what do you do? What's your What's the problem again? With your own words, I do have it in in written here, but I will. I would like to hear it from you. Absolutely. So, what we do is we help companies save hours by finding content within their videos, and these are videos that have an educational and informational nature. And from there, they can obviously repurpose that content. And to do so, we use uh, AI to make the video searchable based on any spoken word, person on screen, or even you know text from your slides if you have a presentation. Uh, is there time for one more question? Great, uh, thanks for the presentation. So you mentioned you have 18 uh, early adapters right now. What's the common thread between these 18 early adapters? Is there anything that unifies them in form of uh, the buyer persona or the company type or stage? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of uh, some of the common traits, uh, the type of videos that they use are videos of an educational and informational nature. So then these tend to be obviously videos for uh, learning purposes. And in terms of the industry, so we've got one of the, you know, the, the top three business schools that is one of our early adopter customers. And we also have other companies that are more in the kind of um, corporate training and startup training world where they produce a lot of content. And of course, they want to be able to leverage that content and repurpose it much more efficiently than they currently can. And that is to obviously improve the engagement and accelerate the acquisition of knowledge from their customers, but also potentially internally on their end to be able to obviously use that content to better communicate. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. And we'll be moving to the next startup, which is Copy Monkey. Hi, my name is Anton, CEO and founder of Copy Monkey, AI for content generation for e-commerce. E-commerce is growing fast, so more and more products selling online. Each and every product needs unique content. So e-commerce shops forced to hire copywriters and working with copywriters is expensive, time consuming and not scalable. That's why we developed CopyMonkey, AI for content generation for e-commerce. With CopyMonkey, e-commerce shops doesn't need to hire more copywriters. For example, this is our Shopify plugin that generates product descriptions in seconds using product characteristics. Let's compare CopyMonkey with a human. Our pilot customers have 2 million products. So human will need 500,000 hours to create content for that product. And with CopyMonkey, it can be done within five hours. It might sound like magic, but it becomes possible because of the large language models like GPT-3, which we trained on tons of hand-picked e-commerce data and integrated into current e-commerce workflows. In our advisory board, there is a creator of Russian version of GPT-3. Also, we brought on board expertise in e-commerce sales and strategy. This obsessive e-commerce focus is what differentiates us from the competitors. The alternative solutions are tools for marketers. They do not solve e-commerce problems and not integrated with the current ways of working. As a tech geek with a computer science degree, my passion is leading R&D teams and creating tech-savvy products. I was doing it at Kaspersky and at the AI startup Baked by 500. This experience helped me to bring on board eight world-class engineers that are working with us part-time and ready to commit full-time when we will have enough resources. My co-founder Kate was working as a customer experience manager, so our partners and clients are in the good hands too. Together with Kate, we know each other for a couple of years and spend some time traveling. During traveling, we survived an earthquake in Turkey, so I believe we have pretty good chances of survival at startup as well. Then we won Visa Online Hackathon and decided to start the company. Our current growth rate in enterprise segment is 4 clients per month with a 6k projected MRR per client. We have 10 ongoing enterprise pilots, which gives us almost 540,000 projected error in this pipeline. 
To increase with the growth speed, we are raising 20k, 60k is raised and 60k is already committed. And we will reach 1 million in annual recurrent revenue in 2 years. At the end, I believe that in 3 years, 30% of all business content will be generated by AI and CopyMonkey will be a leader in e-commerce content generation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm inviting Anton Selikov, CEO of CopyMonkey, to the stage, please. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, Jury, your questions, please. I can go first. Um, great presentation, Anton. I think like with the underlying models such as GPT-3, um, more and more of the technology will be commoditized, right? It, it's even more important that you build a defensible product on top of that. So can you maybe talk a bit about how you plan to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as we can see now, our competitors use GPT-3 from OpenAI, which is not the competitive advantage, but bottleneck for them because the OpenAI's GPT-3 have their own uh, pricing. So they price per character. And what we done, we actually took this approach of uh, big language models uh, and just training from the ground on e-commerce data. So it's not GPT-3, but it's still the big transformer model. All right. Another question from the jury, please. Uh, hi, interesting presentation and interesting to see more. Well, apparently it's not GPT-3 based this, but interesting to see more startups building on top of GPT-3. Uh, what about languages? So uh, do you have multi-language support and what language yeah. do you support? So basically our current traction is in this region, but I'm happy to announce that today we are submitted our English version Shopify plugin uh, into the world. So we are now uh, under the re re reviewing in Shopify. So it will be available in two weeks in English too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anton. Thank you for your presentation and answers. We have to move to the next startup, which is My 3D Cloud. Hi, my name is Reinis and I'm a CEO of My 3D Cloud. We have built a platform for effective collaboration on 3D projects. I started my professional career as a special operation manager in political consulting, solving democracy problems in more than 15 countries. But in 2014, after coming back from Afghanistan, I saw that the global change and digital transformation just started in architecture, engineering and construction industry. In order to solve the problem that 92% of construction projects are not finished on time, causing this industry at least $1 trillion in losses every year. That's why I decided that I want to be a part of this great opportunity and new 3D technology breakdown. And I established and started to run a 3D laser scanning and 3D modeling service company that today is making revenue of $1 million. At that time, we didn't have any problems with clients, but we had a lot of problems processing, delivering and presenting 3D files to our clients. We were losing hundreds of operational hours because of these obstacles and lack of appropriate infrastructure. Today, the volume of 3D laser scanning market is $8.5 billion and losing 30% of productivity causes up to $2.5 billion in potential losses. That is why we created My3D Cloud, workspace for effective collaboration on 3D projects for companies delivering 3D services to architects, engineers and construction companies. First, it was our in-house product, just for ourselves, but after many client requests, we spun off this idea to separate entity, and we started to offer this product to the market. We made it possible to store all 3D project-related files, documents and pictures in one place, in a very special structured way. To view and convert 3D data online without using any difficult and expensive software. And most important, we also made tools for teams to collaborate on 3D projects. Our vision is to build a global marketplace, an ecosystem for collaboration between all construction industry players to help speed up the process of digital transformation from 2D to 3D approach. Our business model is very simple. We offer four data plans up to 999 euro per year and additionally we sell enterprise level license for 25,000 euro. 
We have more than 300 users, starting from survey companies and ending by largest construction companies and governments. We generate revenue and new customers are coming in. We are high profile, 100% dedicated to this idea team, knowing each other for a long time, with over 10 years of experience in the industry, with startup experience and great success story behind each of us. We work 10 to 12 hours per day, six days a week, and we will not settle down before we unite all 3D industry players and reach the success we are aiming at. Thank you. I'm inviting Reini Stachelowski, CEO of My3D Cloud, to the stage. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Jury, please, your questions. Yes, so hi, I have a question. Uh, thank you for the pitch. Um, I'm kind of familiar with the space. I see that uh, many incumbents are moving into kind of the same tools as you present, collaboration, and be able to consolidate data from different sources. So how would you say that you differentiate from the incumbents and in particular with your AI components? Yeah. Well, what we do, we are building an ecosystem and one of the components is automated 3D modeling that users can take the data to our cloud and use the cloud computing to build automatic models. And that is the one of the key elements why uh, we are actually speeding up this digital transformation. And yeah. So you mean that it's not only documentation, it's also create, creation? create yes, exactly. and work with the models. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Hi, maybe I can go. Hi, Radis. Thanks for Hi. the presentation. Um, quick, quick, like my question is on, on the sales cycle. I, I, I noticed like very, you know, familiar big logos also there. Like what, what is the sales process looking like and what, what, is, what is required from, from your end to get the customer up and running? Nothing special. We are we have different sales channels. We basically focus on, on direct sales. Then we have sales partners in different regions. And well, we 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 have automated our sales process really deep. And um, marketing, uh, basically marketing activities are um, content marketing, um, ads, and social networks. Okay. Thanks. Um, we have to finish this question session and move to the next startup in the AI ML track, which is Algomo. Hi everyone, we're Algomo and we make customer service multilingual. The majority of new internet users do not speak English. This means that every company that wants to grow internationally has to support the customers in the native language. And currently there are two options to do that adding more customer service agents to support every new language, which is very expensive, or adding more automation, like chatbots, who generally don't really work and they can be really expensive in a multilingual setup. So how do I know that? Well, I used to be the lead data scientist that created HSBC's global chatbot framework two years ago. For a basic solution just supporting just three languages, we spent one year and millions of pounds. But why was it so expensive? This is because we followed the industry standard of creating a separate bot per language. This, however, required three teams. An initial team that created the bot in English, and then two more that would translate the, the, the bot and maintain it in the other languages. And this, of course, uh, resulted in operational silos. And trust me, it was a headache to coordinate, not to mention really expensive. The solution is to create a single bot that understands all the languages. And that's exactly what we're doing here at Algomo. This approach helped companies expand internationally, faster, cheaper, and more importantly, with no more operational headaches. But this is only half of the story. Algomo is the only technology that you support with 109 languages. We're talking about 109 languages. These are more than Google Translate. Building this technology is not easy, but we're the right time to do it. Before HBC, I was Vice President of Data Science at Barclays. The rest of the team has PhDs in machine learning and over 30 years of commercial experience. The strong combination of product and team helped us secure £260,000 in grants from the UK government. We're currently in closed alpha, yet our unique offering helped us secure 30 pilots with neobanks 
SMEs, travel agencies, even the public sector. And do you know how good some of them? We created a bot solely based on the frequently asked questions on the website. And if you ask someone would otherwise need months to create a bot, if they want to get one right now 10 times less, then the sales is kinda easy. The current market is $37 billion and there's plenty of competition with big players such as IBM, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, etc. All these technologies combined can currently support 33 languages that cover 4.6 billion people. Algomo supports 76 languages more, reaching an extra 1.4 billion people. These people live in emerging economies of rising middle classes who have access to the internet but unfortunately no support in their native language. And I'm really excited to see how much bigger we can grow this $37 billion market for the 1.4 billion people for whom we're practically a monopoly. And that alone should be a good reason to come talk to us. So thank you, we're Algomo, we make customer service multilingual. Thank you. I'm inviting uh, Charis Fir Firakis, CEO of Algomo, to the stage, please. Hi, everyone. Hi, hello. Jury, please ask your questions. Hi, interesting presentation. So what underlying multilingual module, model are you using for the chatbot? Is it BERT or, or something else? So we're using an adaptation of BERT. So we're using, a, at this point, it's a multilingual language sentence encoder. And we're using a version of, uh, called Lapse. Um, we can incorporate uh, more uh, more languages into that. Uh, but the interesting thing is that this is a framework. So before that, we used the laser from Facebook. Before you, that, we used the news from Google again. It does not really matter. As we call it, this is model as a plugin. So as these big um, kind of players release these language models, we can integrate it with us and we can get uh, the bottles up and running. Uh, but the whole of the rest of the infrastructure is ours. So all we're using um, some technique called the uh, fusion learning. So we don't require too much data to actually train a bot. We can just create it solely based on FAQs, for example. And we can also also use negative um, examples for for a training. Sorry, I'm talking too much. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Thanks. Thanks. No uh, one, one, one more small question, if, if you have one. If not, then we'll move forward. Thank you so much, Charis. We're going no to problem. the next. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we're going to the next startup, which is Exolit. Hi, I'm Yonne from Exolite. We provide insight to social media, starting from TikTok. At the moment, there are no good tools to analyze the behavior of TikTok users. This leaves marketing efforts of social media agencies and global brands unmeasured and therefore unoptimized. We solve this issue by providing useful insight and analytics to TikTok influencers, social media agencies and global brands. With the help of our tools, our customers are able to see how their marketing performs and make improved decisions based on this data. Today, our users can monitor and analyze their TikTok accounts, but also follow the expert tips and guides on our blog. We launched exolite.com a bit over a year ago. After that, we have reached 1 million monthly users on the site, closed a pre-seed round, and started developing B2B toolkit with a government grant. Our revenue comes from pay subscriptions, but also from ads on our blog. Our timing to be in the market is extremely good. The market size for influencer marketing platforms doubles its size every two years. We are not alone in this niche, but we are not afraid of the competition. Our solution solves the widest range of problems for our customers. Our team has proven experience from building startups and MVPs before Exolite, and we also get support from the digital hard capital that invested in us. Our finances are in good shape and we already generate meaningful income every month. In addition, we are part of many startup programs to boost our finances even more. In the upcoming months, we will speed up the growth by hiring a new developer and introducing more features on the site. Our goal is to break even in the beginning of next year. I'm Jonne from Exolite. Thank you for your time.
Thank you. And I'm inviting Yone Huatari, co-founder of Exolite, to the stage, please. Hello, Hello. Yone. Hi, we can uh, hear you well. All right, uh, Jury, are you ready with your questions? I can go. Hey, hi, Anna. Uh, good presentation. Thank you. Um, my first question, like, just to understand a bit better, like, are you targeting this for TikTok users themselves, like influencers, to to, sh you know, show their show their numbers to the agencies or whoever is is uh, hiring them, or is this more a reporting monitoring tool for the business customers? Uh, thank you. Uh, at the moment, we are doing the first thing, so we are offering the numbers for influencers. But our goal is to move on to the B2B offering so that the, we would be more on the second segment that you mentioned. Okay, got it. Thanks. We can have another question. Yeah, so about the focus on TikTok, um, how can we show TikTok as your first source? And then also it would be interesting to hear, do you need any specific APIs or approvals to access TikTok as a platform? for your software? Uh, yeah, so at the moment we are uh, having our own solution to get the data. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I cannot disclose that any further, unfortunately. How scalable is that solution that you have today? Uh, it's extremely scalable as we have built everything from the day one to support global growth. All right, thank you, Jonne. And we are going to move to the next startup, which is Panda Training. Hi. We helped employees in companies like SAP, Universal Pictures, and Airbnb to remove stress from their work life. How, you may ask? By making coaching 100 times cheaper. Let me give you an example. Do you know what your top three priorities are at work? My name is Dima Sirotkin and I'm the CEO of Panda Training. I have struggled with various issues related to our startup strategy. And I must confess to you that I really don't like mentors. I feel like they always give me random advice without understanding the company properly. I figured time to test my own product. Uh, it must sound weird, but I honestly was shocked how helpful our chatbot coach was to me. What we built is an automated chatbot coaching Every week, I book a time in my calendar when the bot messages me and I do a 30-minute conversation with it. Mostly, it asks me questions, it helps me to set goals and provides the space for reflection with clear coaching frameworks. Our business model is b 2 c to b SaaS. The reason is, selling to HR kind of sucks. Um, they often lack the budget and the power. Instead, we sell directly to you, the individual, and you will spread the word inside your company. Like our user from Airbnb, you might be an introvert, working in a tech company, perhaps a team leader. When we get introduced to our B2B clients by their employees, our promise to them is change and data. 70% of change management programs fail. We help our clients achieve behavior change at scale while gathering anonymized insights about systemic bottlenecks. We have already made the cost of coaching 10 times lower than traditional coaching. All of it was achieved while bootstrapped with close to 100k revenue. Within 6 to 12 months, depending on our resources, we will make the cost 100 times lower. As for our team, our CTO is a 3 times founder who led development at Amazon. Our COO is a social psychologist who worked for a VC firm and organized huge events for Slush. Our head coach is a certified ICF coach, and I have worked as a consultant for some of the biggest Finnish companies while working on my PhD in organization and management. Imagine each person on earth took 30 minutes each week to think about what is most important right now. In my humble opinion, this could truly change the world. You may be wondering how you could help us. Whether you're an investor, a knowledge worker, or an HR manager, we all could benefit from a coach in our lives. Please try our product out and I promise you that it will change your perception of what is possible and make you take thinking seriously. Panda-training.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Panda Training. And I'm inviting you, Dima Sirotkin, CEO of Panda Training, to the stage. 
Hello, Dima. Hi. We can hear you well. So, Jury, are you ready with your questions? Such a, such a complex sales model, B to C to B. Uh, why, I mean, why and uh, why not go B to B to C? Uh, in, in the sense that uh, businesses would like their employees to be happy anyways. And, and it's more uh, cheaper, probably, customer acquisition cost-wise. Yeah, our experience has, has shown the opposite um, in a sense that it, 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 um, it seemed like um, uh, for, you know, we, we kind of were in a the, in the bottle where on one hand, there is a, there is a manager who is saying, well, this is an HR topic. On the other hand, there's an HR person who says, well, um, I don't have the budget um, and I'm afraid of technology and I'm not gonna buy this. Uh, so in our experience, this has proven to be better. And we've seen that, okay, um, you know, um, when, we, when we actually look at the, at the users, they love the product, uh, but then from a client perspective, um, it was sort of a bit harder to kind of like show because they are not the final user in a sense. Uh, so that's just been our experience um, that seemed to work a lot better for us. Thank you. Do we have and another question? One, yeah. one, one last point uh, for us as well. Like our primary um, tact sales tactic, sales channel was cold calling, and it just doesn't work there. So. All right, uh, we've actually ran out of the time. So thank you so much, Dima, and. Uh, we will now try to run the uh, startup that was uh, the video was lagging so legit let's see if it goes now hi i'm alex from legit every day legal professionals struggle reaching potential clients they waste large amounts of time on admin tasks delayed and unpaid invoices are a frequent problem lawyers often chase clients and give them huge discounts just to get paid on the other side, 80% of people cannot afford legal services and millions of people get into situations that need fast, on-the-spot legal help. Imagine you've had a car accident abroad and need fast legal help. Where would you go? Our solution is Legit, an AI-powered marketplace for small consultations from top legal experts in your language wherever you are. It's a lawyer in your pocket. Just open and write a question and the app will do the rest. In just a few taps, you're talking to a local expert in our live chat. And that's it. The whole user journey from the initial question to the end of a consultation happens on the platform. No emails, no calls, no office visits. Legit is simple and easy to use. Our AI understands the content of the question and knows who's best to answer. The auction style system provides the best value for clients. And of course, we protect both the client and the lawyer with dispute resolution, KYC features, as well as handling payments. We target solo practitioners in the individual users market segment with 111 billion euros globally and 25 billion euros in Europe. We take 15 to 25% commission from each transaction and offer a subscription for our advanced features of the CRM. We've tried our MVP in the Baltics and Poland with 35 legal experts and five partner lawyers that oversaw service quality. Our limited trial ended expats attracted more than 100 clients a month with an average cost of 100 euros per question. By the end of 2021, we will onboard 200 lawyers across the Baltics and Poland giving 5,000 consultations. And by 2025, we'll be in Finland, Spain, Croatia, Holland, Serbia, and Germany with over 12,000 lawyers and thousands of daily consultations, a potential of 40 million euros in revenue. We are a team of real heavyweights with solid global experience, and we have worked with many global organizations, Yandex Go, Coca-Cola, Coolbet, just to name a few. And of course, our quality control partners in the Baltics and Poland are expert lawyers and attorneys at law with years of experience. Our next stages include a full-scale launch in the Baltics and major improvements to our platform. We will need 300,000 euros to do this effectively. I'm Alex from Legit, a lawyer in your pocket. Just write a question and the app will do the rest. Something no one else can match. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm inviting Alex Bitskov, CEO of Legit, to the stage, please. Hi, I'm right here. Alex, uh, Jerry, your questions, please. 
Uh, I can go first. So good presentation and definitely industry ripe for disruption. So what type of questions are we talking about here? Uh, I can imagine that they are not that crucial uh, in giving, you know, what, who, who are your users? Who are your ideal customer profile uh, in this app? So from, from our experience, the ideal uh, customer are the, customer, are the customers that are on the move. So freelancers, um, expats, and um, uh, nomads. Uh, so these are the perfect customers. And the questions we get asked are tax uh, law, labor law, migration, you know, contract law. Um, but it, uh, that's not limited there. SMEs are a perfect uh, target as well. Another question? Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, it's uh, it's bold to say that you promise that you will always give the best advice. Uh, I guess it relies also on the sourcing of your legal candidates. Of so um, how do you secure the quality and uh, also do you see any risks in the advice that may be given on your platform? There, there are several components. So first, uh, the, any lawyers that register go through a quality control feature. We have a quality control partner in each country right now that uh, they, they're in charge of seeing that the uh, lawyer is verified and their certificates are in order. The secondly, if the client is not happy, there's a dispute system. The client can submit uh, a dispute. And again, our quality control partner will make an impartial judgment. They don't see the names, they just see the case. So this is something we also offer. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And uh, this was the last pitch of this track. So thank you, dear jury members. Uh, thank you for your questions and uh, thank you for listening carefully.